If you're planning on using a DSLR and camera lens for your astrophotography, whether that's wide angle Milky Way stuff or telephoto deep space work, one of the problems you might encounter is that you have a hard time getting the stars perfectly sharp. This can be especially true if your eyesight isn't the best or your camera doesn't have a flip out screen or the live view system isn't great. There's a lot of factors that go into this, but one thing that can really help you out is a simple Batinov mask. These are traditionally used with telescopes but thankfully there's now an option for DSLR shooters as well, and they're gonna work on virtually any lens you might have. So I wanna thank Case Filters. They actually reached out to me and said, hey, we like your stuff, and do you wanna check out some of these filters? And I've been wanting to do this video for a couple of months now, so that kinda of was nice that it all worked out. Today we're gonna to be looking at two different filters from Case. We've got their kinda of more traditional circular filter, and then a square filter for some of those who might already have a filter system already. All right, so let's start off with the more traditional circular filters. And I'm sure a lot of you already have some type of filter like this. Maybe it's a UV filter, also known as a protection filter, which brings up an important point. If you're gonna be using those for astrophotography, those protection filters or UV filters, they might actually be causing you problems in the form of star distortion. So I always recommend you take off any filter on the front of your lens before you shoot at night. And that'll also free up that filter slot for this Batonov mask. And this brings up the first problem I have. I head over to Case's website to try and find these filters, and I spent about five or 10 minutes, I could not find them anywhere. So I will be having links in the video description to allow you to get directly to these filters, that way you don't have to hunt around like I did. I would recommend going to the website though, and checking out what they talk about in terms of buying the larger size, and then buying the step-up rings. We'll talk about this more in a few minutes. I just wanted you to be aware that they do a pretty good job of explaining what you'll actually need because it can be very confusing for beginners. But I will have a link for the exact filters in the video description below. And this is the Magnetic Star Focusing Tool Plus Adapter Ring. That's the full name of it. And it comes in a little case like this, so it'll be pretty sturdy when you're going on your trips. And if you get the bundle correctly, you're gonna get a little threaded adapter ring, and then the filter itself, the Batno mask, will be in here as well. And the nice thing is this is all magnetic, which doesn't sound like that big of a deal, but at night it's actually really comes in handy. So these will just clip together magnetically and save you a little bit of work. And this brings up an important little uh, side discussion. You need to make sure you're getting the correct sized filter ring. This is gonna depend entirely on your lens and we can spend a whole video on this, but I'm gonna try and simplify it as much as possible. The first thing you'll need to do is figure out the correct filter thread size for your lens. Most lenses nowadays have that printed on the inside of the lens cap. So you can take off your lens cap and take a look inside. You're looking for like a little zero with a slash through it and then a number, in this case, 82. That means this Tamron 24 to 70 millimeter lens has an 82 millimeter filter thread. And if you're gonna buy a filter, you need to make sure it's 82 millimeters. Some lenses might also have this printed on the lens body itself. For example, my Tokina 100 millimeter has a 55 millimeter filter thread, and my Tamron 150 to 600 millimeter lens has a 95 millimeter filter thread, which means that filter is gonna be a lot larger. And this brings up your first real dilemma, which is just commonplace with using circular filters. You can only really use them with potentially one lens at a time. In other words, if I buy an 82 millimeter filter, it's really only gonna work for this lens. I could adapt it to work with some of the smaller lenses, but then you have to buy step-up rings and just more stuff to carry around, although that's not really that big of a deal. Just something to think about. Again, there's gonna be a lot more information you can find online about uh, filters and filter threads and step-up rings and adapters. You might wanna do some research if you're still new to this topic. Anyway, to keep things simple, again, if you let's say you have the same lens as me, it's an 82 millimeter filter thread, you would get the 82 millimeter option from case and it's gonna come in two pieces, the magnetic Batonov mask and the thread itself. Then what you can do is separate the two, take your little adapter ring and screw that in the front of your lens. That's what's going to ultimately hold the filter in place. And when you're tying this in, it's not very hard to do. Just make sure you don't cross the threads or else it won't go any further. After it's been attached to the front, now you can grab your Batonov mask and it'll just clip right there 
like so. It's very easy to do. Now at this point, you're all ready to go. You can find a bright star or maybe a planet up in the night sky. I'd recommend finding the brightest object you can besides the moon. Moon's not going to work for this. You can put your camera on the ball head if you haven't done so already. Aim up to there. And then at that point, one of the best ways you can focus is using live view. On this camera, I just hit the little LV button. And now I'm going to see a real-time preview of what we're looking at. With this Batnov mask on here, you're going to create a unique star pattern on every single star in the photo. Again, this will be easier to do on very bright stars or some of the planets. So I'd recommend you find one of those, at least for your first couple nights. If you're lucky, you'll actually be able to see the star in real time using your live view preview. And then at that point, you can just use the plus and minus buttons to zoom in all the way in real time, turn your focusing ring left and right, and you need to get the star pattern exactly like you see from the manufacturer. If it looks exactly like this, then you know your stars are sharp. However, it's a little bit off, you know it's not sharp. And from there, all you do is just turn the focusing ring left and right very slightly until you get the lines all lined up and you know you're good to go. Keep in mind though, if you have it focused at 24 millimeters and you zoom into 35 millimeters in a few minutes, that's enough to throw off the focus. So what you can do if you leave that little thread on here, let's say you change your focal length, you find another composition, just throw it on real quick, zoom in again, refocus, and then you can pull it right back off. It's really nice and easy to utilize this feature. And again, this is mainly going to be useful if you don't have the best eyesight or you're just having trouble focusing at night. For me, I don't have that problem, but it is nice to have that Batnov mask because I have a William Optic Space Cat telescope and normally I would say I don't really need a Batnov mask. But in that case, the Batnov mask comes with the telescope and I use it every single night. So I usually wouldn't use one, but now that I have them, they definitely come in handy. Just something to think about. Anyway, getting back on track. We've covered the basics of how these filters work. Again, you're gonna look for this specific spike pattern and make sure the line is right there in the middle. If it's not, you're not gonna have sharp stars. And that's really all there is to it. Some other points you wanna turn off vibration control, that will mess up your focus. Also turn off autofocus. And for those on maybe an older Canon DSLR, this is where you're mainly gonna have this problem. If you turn on live view and you aim it up at a bright star and you can't see anything, that's just because your live view system can't handle astrophotography, at least part of it. So therefore, in your case, this could be any camera, if you can't see anything on live view, you'll just need to take a test photo. It's not a big deal. Your test photo settings can vary very drastically, but if you're looking for somewhere to start off with, I would say 15 seconds, ISO 12,800, and then your widest aperture, in this case, f2.8, maybe f4 though to get slightly sharper stars. After you've got those settings dialed in, take your photo. Once it's complete, you can go to the playback screen, zoom in, and again, we're looking for that specific star pattern. If it doesn't line up properly, then we'll just move our focusing ring maybe slightly to the right, take another test photo. If the pattern got worse, we know we went the wrong direction. So I'll turn it to the left now, try again. It takes a little bit of practice, but you should be able to get it within the first night of just going through this, then you'll be good. So those are your two options for focusing now with the Badnov mask. Hopefully you can find a really bright star, use live view and do it in real time. That's gonna save you a lot of time. If that's not working though, take a test photo, see if the star pattern matches. If not, adjust and keep doing that until you get the uh, lines lined up exactly like you need to. Now, as we mentioned earlier in the video, this Badnov mask works great if I'm only gonna be using this lens, as you see here, not a big deal. But let's say I wanna go from wide angle to telephoto and I wanna use multiple lenses throughout the night with different size filter threads. In that case, you might be better off getting a square filter, which case was nice enough to send that one out as well. That's what we'll look at next. Now let's talk about the square filter system from Case. This is a 100 millimeter square filter. It's gonna do the exact same thing as the other one, but it's just the Batnob mask printed on a square piece of glass. This can either be a really good thing or a really bad thing, depending on your scenario. What I mean by that is you're gonna need a 100 millimeter filter holder for all this to work. So for some of you, if you don't have that piece, this is gonna probably be the wrong direction to go because you have to buy new hardware, more things to keep track of, and a lot more cost up front. But for those who already have some type of 100 millimeter filter system, now you can reuse that with this Batnob mask. And that's personally really what I was looking for. Just to show you, I'm using the Lee Filters 100 millimeter holder here. I've got some black tape because I had problems with light leaks. I've also got their 
little ring here on the front, which allows me to use a circular polarizer. And inside of here, there's two filter slots, which means I can stack my six stop and 10 stop ND filters for a total of 16 stops. I'm probably losing a lot of you right now. This is for really long exposure photography during the day, whether you want to photograph clouds passing by or more usually waterfalls, streams, creeks, rivers, things like that, where you can really slow down the motion of the water. And you know, if you're looking to get into that type of photography, then this might be a smart investment because you can use it during the daytime and you can also use it at night now with this Badenov mask. But the problem is, of course, if you don't have this 100 millimeter filter system, it's gonna be a significant investment. Therefore, I'd only recommend going down this route if you already have a 100 millimeter filter holder like I do. In that case, perfect. Then after you've bought the filter holder itself, you're also gonna to need to buy adapter rings for every single lens that you own that has a different filter thread. This is where things start to get kind of complicated and expensive. So let me break things down as simply as possible. I've got multiple lenses with me here today. I've got a Tamron 150 to 600 millimeter, which has a 95 millimeter filter thread. That means I had to buy a 95 millimeter adapter ring. This ring screws onto the front of the lens and then I can grab my filter holder, clip it right to that ring, and then attach my filter. I can also take that filter holder off of the ring and then attach it to my Tamron 70 to 200 millimeter lens. That lens has a 77 millimeter adapter ring, which I can screw on the front and then attach the filter holder. So you can see that with these two adapter rings, I can use that same square holder on all my different lenses. I can even buy a small step up ring for like five or 10 bucks and use these with some of my other lenses. But at the end of the day, now you're gonna have all these different adapter rings lying around the house, one potentially for each lens. Again, it really just means that, you know, you might have a 77 millimeter lens, a 95 millimeter lens, an 82. So now you have three different rings you'll need to use potentially with your square filter system. So the square filter system allows you to use this very easily with all your different lenses, but it clearly has some drawbacks. Now that we've looked at both the circular filter and the square filter from Case, we're gonna head outside, test them out, and make sure they actually work. Rather than taking you outside with me, I thought it'd be easier for everybody if I just focus on taking the photos and we'll look at them together here in post-processing and I'll tell you what I experienced while I was out there. The first thing I noticed is that my test settings I gave you early in the video were too bright. In this case, ISO 12,800 F2.8 15 seconds with my 24 to 70 millimeter lens. As you can see, if we zoom in, the star is so bright, it's actually hard to see if our pattern is correct. And that's why I always stress, you need to figure out what camera settings work best for you because the amount of light pollution you're shooting through, if the moon is out, the aperture you have, it's all gonna change. In this case, ISO 6400 F2.8 and eight seconds gave me much better results. Now if I zoom in, I can clearly see the star pattern here. And the Batnov mask is just like I would see on my Space Cat telescope. It looks kind of like cat whiskers. We have three lines. Our main goal is to get the center line directly in the center. If this center line is too high or too low, we know we're not focused. And that's kind of what we're looking for there is a sharp focused image. Remember, you want to find a bright star in the sky and aim up towards that to help with your focusing. Because if you're aimed up over here, there's not a bright enough star to create the Badenov mask pattern, at least clearly enough for us to see. So that is one of the downsides of using any Badenov mask is that if you don't have a lot of bright stars where you're aiming, they're really not that useful. You need to kind of search around for a appropriately bright star to get this effect. Another problem I had using the Badenov mask with my 24 to 70 is that when I zoomed out at 24 millimeters, it really wasn't that useful. I couldn't see too much on the live view preview, which I was using. And even when I took a photo and zoomed in, I mean, that's clearly out of focus. We can tell because the stars are a little bit blurry. Let's compare that now to this image here. They're quite a bit sharper, but we're missing that third whisker, if you will. And that's why I say, you know, it's really not that useful if you're gonna be shooting at 24 millimeters or wider. You'd frankly just be better off just turning the focus ring slightly left and right until the star is as small as possible rather than spending the money on the Badenov mask where you really can't tell much of a difference at all. It's uh, just not as useful as I would like. So that was really my first observation is that if I was going to buy a Badenov mask, I would feel like I wasted my money if I was only using it 
probably 35 millimeters and wider. It will come in handy though once you get up to about 70 millimeters, then you're gonna be able to tell if you're focused. And what do we see here? These lines are all crooked, so obviously I'm not focused at 70 millimeters. Again, not focused. There we go, that's what we wanna see. Hopefully that gives you an idea of what you should be looking for. And again, just having those three lines really helps to speed up the process and really make sure you have a focused image. But I don't really see much benefit if you're only gonna be shooting with a wide angle lens. Next, I use the square 100 millimeter Batonov mask. Again, pretty much the exact same thing on my Tamron 70 to 200 millimeter lens. And I took a three second photo. And look at that. Now the Batonov mask is even more defined. In fact, I probably could have used a faster shutter speed because the core is a little bit blown out there in the stars. And I mean, it still looks fine, but it's kind of cool. The more you zoom in, the more useful this Batonov mask becomes. If we go down to the next image, we could see that in this case, it's clearly not focused because the center line is to the left. So I can turn that focus ring. Now I went too far in the other direction, it's to the right, but just keep doing that until you get it as close to the center as possible. If I was a real stickler, I would say it's still not quite perfect. It's maybe a hair to the right, but for most of us, it's gonna be just fine. Finally, I threw that same 100 millimeter square filter on my 150 to 600 millimeter lens, which we see here, and did one more test. But the problem I had is that when you're zoomed in at 600 millimeters without a star tracker, it very quickly uh, becomes blurry. So this wasn't that uh, helpful, but obviously you'd be using a star tracker and this wouldn't be a problem. And if I increase the exposure here, you'll be able to see that baton on mask pattern a little bit better. So now that we've taken a look at some sample images from the case baton of masks, I would say it's a pretty good investment if you're gonna be using a telephoto lens, because this will really make sure you've got pinpoint sharp stars Otherwise, you're really just kind of guessing and you're never quite sure. And the great thing is, you know, you can always slide that filter in maybe 30 minutes from now and make sure that the pattern still lines up. Because one of the problems you'll have, especially in the winter, is that your lens will actually shift slightly if it gets colder. Probably not that much, but it's possible. So what I recommend doing is every 20 or 30 minutes, you go out there, maybe throw on that bat knob mask again in the middle of your session, you'll stop everything, and then just double check that the focus is still good. If not, you can fix it. So just a little tip for you there. And my final word on this is if you are gonna be shooting regularly with a 70 millimeter lens or longer, you might wanna get a bat on mask to help with your focusing at night. However, if you generally just shoot wide angle images between 14 and 35 millimeters, then a bat on mask really isn't gonna be of much use. And therefore you might wanna save your money and put it towards another filter. Before we go, I wanted to mention that I did write an article to accompany this video. I'll have it linked in the video description below. It's over on my website if you want to take a look. That'll go into a little bit more detail on how to pick step-up rings and adapter rings and how to choose a filter holder, along with some more information. So if you do have a few questions, I'd recommend reading through that. Another great resource is LonelySpec.com, which is run by Ian Norman. And he's a fellow astrophotography instructor He's got a lot of really good videos and articles and tutorials here on his website that'll walk you through the basics of photographing the Milky Way. He's even got his own bat knob mask called the Sharp Star. I'm pretty sure he was the very first one to bring these to the market where he had a square 100 millimeter bat knob mask that you can use with a filter holder. He released that back in 2015. So if you head over to his website and look for the Sharp Star, the reason I'm bringing this up is he's got a lot of really good information on how to use a bat knob mask, including a handy chart right here. So you can quickly glance at it and see how that's gonna work for your particular setup. As I showed you today in the video, really, if you're using wide angle lens, a bat knob mask isn't gonna be much help and you'd be better off saving your money. However, if you have a telephoto lens, a bat knob mask can really make things easier. He also goes into the differences between the aperture and how that will affect the diffraction spikes and more. So I wanted to make sure I included this in the video as well. So if you still have some questions about these bat knob masks, you can find it over on Lonely Spec. And that's all I've got for you in today's video. So if you're thinking about picking up any of these bat knob masks, I will have links to these filters in the description below. They've got the 82 millimeter option, the 77 millimeter option, and then finally the 100 millimeter option, which would probably be your best choice if you're gonna use something like the Tamron 150 to 600 millimeter lens, which has a 95 millimeter filter thread and therefore the 100 would be just big enough for it. Remember, you will need to buy a filter holder if you go down this route, 
as well as that adapter ring, which would be in this case 95 millimeters for that Tamron lens. But if you have a smaller lens, like a 70 to 200, then you might want to just get the circular option here that we don't have to mess around with all that extra stuff. But that's all I've got for you today. If you have any more questions, it's probably answered in the article on my website, but you can find links for everything in the video description below. So I'll catch you guys in another video.